In these problems, we're looking at some rules that prove that triangles are congruent to each other. And when I say a tri a triangles are congruent to each other, that means if you have two triangles, all their sides are going to be the same measures and all their angles are going to be the same measures. That's a congruent triangle. And there are some special rules called postulates that prove that. One of them is called the side, side, side congruence postulate. And what that basically says, if you have two triangles and their sides are the same, so the corresponding sides each are the same, so this side is the same as this side, this side the same as that side, this side the same as that side, then the two triangles are congruent. All their angles are going to be the same as well. There's another one called side angle side. And what that says is if you have two sides in a triangle that are congruent and an angle included between the sides. So you notice this angle comes right here between the two sides. It's not this angle or this angle. It has to be the one in between the two congruent sides. Then those triangles are congruent. And let's see, one more we should talk about. We've got the angle side angle. And that's a lot like the last one, except you have two angles and a side in between. So if those are all congruent, then the whole triangle is congruent. And there are one or two others, but we're just going to talk about these for right now. So let's look at this first picture here. And the recommendation I would give you is always go through all the given information and draw it onto the diagram so you can keep it straight in your head. So that's what I'm going to do first here. It says given that HJ equals JL. So HJ is this line and JL is this line. Okay, so they're congruent sides. And then it says angle H, this one, is congruent to angle L. So these two angles. And then it asks which of the following statements is true and it has all these different um, postulates down here saying that the triangles are congruent to each other. But what we have so far is one angle and one side. And all of these congruence postulates, we needed a little bit more than that. So is there anything else we can figure out from this diagram that would give us either a side or an angle? And there is. It's this pair right here. These are vertical angles. So we know that these will be the same. And now what we have is angle, side, angle. All in a row like that. The side is included between the two angles. So these two triangles are indeed congruent to each other. And it's by angle, side, angle. The only trick here is that I notice there's two answers that show angle, side, angle. So what's the difference? Well, look at B. This is a little bit tricky. It says triangle HIJ and triangle KLJ. And you might think those are the same, but it's important that the corresponding points are in the correct order. So this one starts with H, goes up to I, and goes to J. This one starts with K, and points H and K do not correspond. So if we wanted it to correspond, it would be this point over here. So we would want one that would start with L and go up to K. And that's actually what's going on down here. We have HIJ and LKJ. So this is going to be our correct answer. A little bit tricky. All right, let's look at another one. This one says, if PR equals QO, so first thing I'm going to do is add that information. PR, oh, so that's this long side here. And QO is this long side here. So it looks like we might be looking at this big triangle and this big triangle that kind of cross each other and testing to see whether they're <coughs> congruent. It says, and OP, so this line, equals uh, RQ, so this line. Now we've got two sides. Which statement is true? So at this point, we have two sides, no angle. So we need to find either another angle, or another side, or an angle to add to this to, to make one of our congruence postulates work. And this might not be obvious at first, but if you look at this triangle right here and this triangle right here, this side is a side for both of them. And what that means, since a line is obviously congruent to itself, this is the third congruent side. So what we have is triangles with congruent, uh, three congruent sides. And once again, we've got two answers with the side, side, side postulate, 
which one is going to be correct. We want them to correspond. So the first one says O R P. So starting here and going up here like that. And the second one says Q R P, starting up here. So I don't think that's going to be the right one because the point O on this triangle doesn't correspond to the point Q up here. It's P that corresponds to Q. O corresponds to R. So let's look at the next one. Um, o, Q, R. So starting on O, going up to Q, down to R for this triangle. And R, P, O. That looks better. Okay. So B is going to be our correct answer. So that is a little introduction to these triangle congruence postulates.